Today's lesson is about interpreting the rate of change, or slope, in the context of everyday life. It is Common Core 8th grade standard F.4. Now what is rate of change? Well, some people call it slope. And rate of change is the change of the dependent variable divided by the change of the independent variable. Another way to say that is slope, which is rate of change, is the change in the y divided by change in x. And there's a third way that a lot of people say it, which is it is the rise of the graph divided by the run of the graph. Always remember, rate of change and slope are interchangeable words. So if someone says slope, that also means rate of change. If someone says rate of change, that also means slope. Now let's look at example one. Sally Mae wants to go to the beach. She can travel 12 miles per hour on her bike. The beach is 96 miles away. Use a chart and or a graph to show the rate of change and write a rule for the situation. So we're going to come up with a table of values. So at hour zero at the beginning of our trip, we're 96 miles away. Now every hour that goes by, she's traveling 12 miles. So she's getting 12 miles closer to the beach. So after one hour, now she's 96, take away 12 because she's traveled 12 miles. She's only 84 miles from the beach. If we keep following this pattern, we can make an entire table of values. Now that we have these, let's describe what the rate of change is that describes how Sally Mae is getting closer and closer to the beach, her destination. So the distance, if we look at that first, you're going to notice in between each and every one of these values, we're taking 12 away. So the distance the numerator of our slope is going to be negative 12. Now, if we look at the time, you'll notice time is going by. So we're adding one hour, adding one hour, adding one hour every single step of the trip. So on our hours, it's going to be plus one. Well, negative 12 divided by plus one is going to be negative 12. And again, distance is measured in miles and our time was in hours. So negative 12 miles per hour describes the rate of change at which Sally Mae is approaching the beach. Now to see how the change in distance and the change in time are related from Sally Mae's trip to the beach, let's graph all those points that were in our table. If we do that, our point should look something like this. Now what we want to do is draw a line of best fit in order to describe the entire trip. It should look again something like this. And the line you'll notice goes through every single one of the points. Now we've already talked about what the slope is, which is the same as the rate of change. So it's 36, it's three. Now you'll notice in the Y direction, we're going down. So that's really a negative 36 divided by three, which again is negative 12. Now, the other thing is to use the equation of the line to write it, we need to know what the y intercept is. Well, that's our starting place, and Sally Mae started 96 miles from the beach, so it's 96. And with our slope of negative 12, we can write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So the equation that describes Sally Mae's trip is y equals negative 12x plus 96. Now what we can do is we can use that rule to see, well, how long is it going to take Sally Mae to reach the beach? Well, we use our equation and we want our distance to be zero. Well, y is our distance on this formula. So now we have to solve for x, which is the amount of time it's going to take in order to reach the beach. So to solve for x, the first thing we're going to do is subtract 96 from both sides. Now on the right side, it cancels off and you're going to get negative 96 equals negative 12x. Now the next step to solve for x is to divide both sides by negative 12. On the right side, the negative 12s cancel off and negative 96 divided by negative 12 is 8. So what that means is it would take Sally Mae 8 hours to ride her bike to the beach. For example, too, it says your summer job is to take care of the lawn at your school. The school has agreed to pay you $50 plus $6 for every hour you work. Use a chart and a graph to show the rate of change in slope. Also write a rule for the situation. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a table of values. So on this one, at hour zero, how much have we made? Well, we've already got $50 because they probably paid us some money up front for gas and different things like that. Now, every hour that we work, we now get paid. So if we work one hour, we're going to get paid $6. Well, if we start with 50, now we've made $6. Now we're all the way up to $56. Now we keep following this pattern and adding six every time to our total paid for every hour that goes by. So here's a list of values that we can make in our table. Now let's look at the rate of change that this describes. Well, again, it's pay 
divided by hours. Pay is our dependent variable and hours is the independent. We decide how many hours we want to work. Well, in this situation, you're going to notice that the difference in all the pay amounts is going to be plus six because we keep making more as we work more hours. So that's going to be the numerator of our slope of our rate of change. Now on the hours, you're going to notice every hour that we work. So we add one hour every single time. That's how we got paid more. So it's going to be a positive one. Now six divided by one, that's just six. And again, pay is in dollars and our time is in hours. So we make $6 for every hour that goes by. Now, if we look at this graphically, what we're going to do is we're going to plot those four points that are in our table. Now we're going to draw a line of best fit that goes through all four of these points. Now, if we describe the slope, the rise over run in this situation, you're going to notice that it's going to be 18 divided by three and everything is positive because we're going to the right for the X and we're going up for Y and 18 divided by three is again six because we're making six dollars an hour. Now, if that's our slope, now let's talk about our y-intercept. Well, again, what was it? Well, we started at $50. Before we ever even worked an hour, we had made $50. And we know our slope is 6, so the equation that describes this situation is y equals 6x plus 50. Now, if we want to use this rule, we want to know, well, how many hours will it take for you to make $200? Well, 200 is a value of Y. So we take our equation and in place of Y, we put 200. Now X is the number of hours it's going to take us to accomplish this. So we need to solve for X. Well, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is add or subtract any number on the side with X, which in this case is plus 50. And the opposite of adding 50 to get it to the other side, we do its opposite, which is subtract 50. Now on the right hand side, they cancel off and 200 minus 50 is 150 is now equal to 6X. Now to solve for X, it's six times X. The opposite of multiplying is to divide and whatever we do to one side, we must do to both sides. So on the right hand side, the sixes cancel off. So X is equal to 150 divided by six is 25. So what this means is it would take you 25 hours to earn $200.